Hello everyone, it's Joel Davis with the United Medical Transportation Providers Group coming at you with another fantabulous video that I encourage you to watch the entire video, trust me. It's going to be long, uh, it'll even be a little dry at some points because I'm making notes. It's an actual recording of a conference call I had last week uh, with a preferred client provider. She's great, she's hardworking, she's ambitious, she's diligent. Um, She's been she's well experienced in the industry. She purchased this existing business in 2016. But uh, the topic of conversation is an executive hiree. So it's not like she's trying to hire a driver or a dispatcher. This is an executive position that could really help her start to exponentially grow her business. Now, uh, there's a couple of slow parts in the beginning, especially where I'm taking notes. Uh, you will hear some dead audio because I have to pass this video over to uh, Stefan, my video guy, to make sure that he deletes all sensitive information. Uh, this is one of my client providers, which means I'm not going to share any of her names, numbers, locations, things like that. So I got to be sensitive uh, to her pertinent information. So I hope you can respect that. But again, work through the... Uh, the dead audio. So when you do hear dead audio, don't worry. It's not your computer. It's not your mobile uh, phone or tablet or anything like that. But it is necessary. Uh, for those of you who I work with one-on-one, -on -one, you know I don't share information. It is what it is. Um, but I encourage you, watch the entire video. It's going to be lengthy. Uh, the longer it goes on, there's even more layers, more things to unpack. So especially if I'm going to be uh, seeing you at the end of next month down in Orlando, Take notes, think about the video, uh, digest it, think, put yourself in her shoes, what questions would you have, what concerns would you have, um, make notes and make sure that you bring those notes and those questions with you at the end of next month. So stay tuned, it's a long video, I know, I hate long videos, I get long winded, but this one is important, so trust me, watch the whole thing and enjoy, because if you do, I'm gonna see you at the top. So you've been uh, you've been busy as heck between having the kids at home and doing your work. I was reading your emails and uh, what exactly are you what involvement do you have every day with your business right now? Right now I'm doing everything, dispatching twenty four seven, answering calls when my uh, frustrating drivers don't show up. Why aren't they showing issue. up? So like, like for example, last night I had a guy on shift and he just stopped answering his phone. So I had to go wake up at 12.30 in the morning and go do three runs and then turn around. You know, I'm not complaining. That's what a job is of, you know, the owner, but it's frustrating. Sure. So, yeah, that just explains what I'm doing is I'm driving when needed and I'm answering the phone 24-7, doing the books, doing the dispatching, doing everything right now because we try, I cut all the office staff because it was an you know an additional mom billable expense that you know I couldn't sure. couldn't keep around not knowing how long this was going to last. So let me I'm going to jump around a little bit before we talk about or I want to get a better sense of the business itself. Okay. So I'm going to jump around a little bit. Tell me sure. tell me why you um, like in your email um, this office personnel you had to let her go and I get it. But why is, how was it that she was supposedly grandfathered in with the business? I'm not sure. She, so she was uh, dispatching, doing office work for the company before I took ownership. And then she's kind of, she was a family friend, so it kind of, she just kind of stayed with us. Mm -hmm. And I tried to coach her, give her feedback. Um, train her to try to help groom her to you know help her be more efficient complete the tasks as needed but there was just always this you know totally performance. Good. totally yeah good, so man. it was kind totally of one of those good. things where it was unfortunately as a small business you rely on family and friends and we're getting to the point where family and friends weren't um performing they yeah totally good they couldn't grow with the know, business Right, and, and then there was a couple of some issues where she was resist, resistant to the growth. So, it, you know, for me, it's like I get someone who's on board, who is like 
got drive, who's ready to make sure. changes and grow as a business. And that was kind of uh, a weight dragging me down. So you, you purchased the business when? And who'd you purchase it from? Not your, is it? From, okay. In that, um, as the purchase. So when you said that she was grandfathered in, it was more of like a favor for a favor for a favor because she's been with the business a long time, had the family she's association. Family. Like, right. So it's not right. like it was a black and white issue, like they were going to sue you or something like that. No. Okay. So, um, how's your business looking right now? What do you have for number of uh, drivers actively driving vehicles, all that stuff? Right now, we have um, fans, um, and we have, and then we have actively driving because we have some that are over the age of 60, 65, so it's been. Uh, you know, put on hold. <clears throat> um, we have about drivers at the moment. And business is kind of, uh, it, it, it fluctuates. Some days uh, we're, we're super busy, other days we're dead. Is so that I because of the COVID-19 nonsense or is it business in general? Yeah, it's definitely the COVID-19 um, you know, and then, so we're contracted with one, well, two out of the, one, two, three, four, six hospitals. Um, gives us business. So we have a lot of growth that could have, that, that is there. Okay, no, no, no. Is there. What type of revenue are you bringing out of this one hospital? Um, since we pretty much started in December is when it started picking up, we're averaging How about the other hospitals, the other five, are you getting, what do you get averaging out of there a month, all of them combined? Uh... Gotcha. And what other type of revenue are you bringing in from where? From uh, workers' comp brokers, um, some private pay. Um, How much are you bringing in from comp brokers? Um, on average... How much private pay? Uh, maybe I would say. What other sources you got? Um. More previously, right now, COVID's uh, shut that down. Gotcha. And so, what else you got? That's it. So, I've got a uh, workers' comp, um, the hospitals, and some private pay. So, is it safe to say that realistically right now, under COVID... Right. Maybe 20. right now, maybe 10 to 15 hours a week. 
How much you paying them an hour? All of them making the same? Yeah. Are your, so you got um, all your vehicles right now are on the road, you'd say, right? Um, I mean, it, it all depends on the schedule. So, sure. like I said, some days they're all going. <clears throat> I would say most of the time um, I've got maybe cars going a day on average. But uh, a little more <laughs> active in terms of they're all insured, ready to roll. Right, right. Because I've looked at uh, for lo for lowing, um a couple vehicles, but then we get some days where we have an overload of trips, and so we can't risk not sure. taking those. Uh, you know, because a long term effect, if you, you know, if you deny or aren't available for some of these broker trips, they just go find someone else. Sure, I get that. So it's a juggle of trying to maintain. Um, you know, cuts, but be available when, you know, when, we're, when we need to be. How much are you paying right now per vehicle for insurance? You paying uh, ten month a year or nine months? Uh, ten months. And you put you put a deposit down. Right in October. How much you put down? Um, what's a twenty percent down? So is that Space. is that part of my ignorance then? Is that does that include that 20% uh, deposit or no? Uh, or is it what you're averaging? You know what, they just changed it this year. Because if you're, obviously if you're paying, are you paying more than that because you're paying 20% on top of that? Uh, yeah, but I want to say, to correct me, I, well, they just changed it this year to where the deposit can now be spread over um, 11 or the 12 months. So it's probably up to maybe I have to look at it because it, it just changed. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that would be, it's the same in that number for 10 months and then the 20% sure. deposit. So basically the same, just spread over 12 months. Gotcha. Gotcha. So a couple of quick things, um, mm -hmm. doesn't need to be right now, but in the near future, do you have copies of your workers' comp agreement you could send me? Uh, yeah. So if you could send me a comp, your comp agreements, number one, okay. if you could send me a P&L from last year, from 2019, okay. a full year, and if you can, uh, why don't we wait until the end of April? So you could send me a year to date, which will go all the way through the month of April. You could send me a P and L year to date. Okay. Got it. Okay. Um. All right. So you got rid of um your girl in the office for. Right. And your thought process is to apply that funds to uh. Right. Tell me about it. Uh, so, um, worked for our competitor um, in the home care business. So and that's another area that I want to expand to. So that's a Beautiful. that's an incentive for me because he already has experience there. Um, he was so he's working in the home care. He saw the need for um, an EMT, and they they were based out of like just to keep it easy, which is out of our, out of my area. So he uh, started... Are they still... Is uh, yes, but they've expanded and, and are pretty where I'm at. Okay. So um, they expanded out here. 
and have just pre- they're they're definitely leading the market for sure. They, and you started... they came in um, basically in 2015, but uh, you know the year a year before I took over, and of course now I'm I you know catching up. Um, so yeah, they've definitely got the market locked down, but we're competing in that we have a better business uh, brand and service in that uh, you know we're more willing to work with the facilities to adjust to, to what they need. And how do you know this? From what other people have told me, um, from other facilities, our pricing is better um, and the feedback that I got as well, you know, his feedback is, you know, this have a, a square model and they're trying to, you know, fit that on every, every right. solution, exactly. which just doesn't fit. So totally agree. Totally agree. But he, from, you know, from what I've seen and understand, he had the idea for the NMT. He did all the work. He grew it. He has all the relationships. Um, and he is the reason why, aside from, you know, the funding from the company and the resources, the, you know, the reason why it's grown for it grown. So let me answer this. Mm-hmm. Other than, so you're saying that your pricing is better than and right. the feedback you're getting from facilities is that where they're trying to do a one-size-fits-all cookie-cutter method for every facility, you're much more flexible. Um, do you have agreements with all these facilities? No. Okay. What are you more flexible on besides pricing? Um, just our service hours. That... Um, just willing to... Um, be more patient focused, not necessarily money focused. Sometimes they appreciate the fact that we're willing to go the extra mile to do what's the right thing to do. Um, not say they don't do what's right, but just to go the extra mile to make sure we take care of our partnerships and the patients. I get it. What about, um, your service hours? What are your hours that you're running that they're not? Um, we're running 24-7. I think they are too. I'm pretty sure they are too. But we've got our, um, our direct area on lockdown. Um, <clears throat> after they had already established services here, we've come in and pretty much taken over, at least for the hospital, so you're twenty four seven, or who's doing yeah. your who's doing your three a.m. call? Um, I have drivers who um, sign up for the um, night shift, <clears throat> and so they they get a call in bonus to come in and do a trip. How much? To come in plus their time worked. Right. Plus, if it took if it took if it took uh, forty five minutes, you're gonna right. So if they had, let's say they had two calls in the middle of the night, one at two o'clock, one at four o'clock, how much are you gonna pay them? And then during the day, we have um, uh, on-call, paid on-call. So from 12 p.m. to 6 p.m., we have two drivers paid on-call. The local nurses get paid to be on-call. So, yeah. what? pardon my ignorance, why are they on-call at 12 o'clock in the afternoon? That's uh, from... From our experience, that 12 p.m., 12 noon to 6 p.m. is when the hospitals tend to call the most for discharges. Oh, okay. So this is for something that's not on the already on the schedule. Right. Okay. Correct. So you would pay them. So if someone's on call from 12 to 6, you're going to pay them just to be on standby. Where's the vehicle? They have the At vehicle. At the office. 
So you're on standby. And then right, which, and then if yeah, they which, sorry. which means they just they don't have to be they don't have to be at the office because I would have to pay them the full rate of pay, but they have to be able to respond to the office within thirty minutes. Right. Giving us a response time to the hospital within an hour. Gotcha. And um then they come to the so if they had let's say two o'clock you call them up and said, John, I need you here. He gets there at two thirty. So you're paying two thirty comes on, now he's on the clock and he's Correct. Gotcha. And how far away how far are are they away distance wise from the office? Most of them are within ten minutes. I have two that are about one that's about thirty minutes away. Um and then one that's about 15, 20 minutes away. <clears throat> Good. So before we jump back, mm -hmm. your goal, because I know you were hating on my videos. Why are you hating my videos all the time? What do you mean to hate on your videos? <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> that last video, now do you understand why it took me so long and why I was so scared to put it together? Why? Well, I mean, you see how long it was, and I was still having to try to cut it short. No, it was great, though. It was good content. Well, I know, but it's like, I knew it was going to be. That's why I literally had to keep kicking that one down, the, that can down the road, because I knew it was going to take me a long time. I still had to try to cut it short, and some people, I know it was going to go over a lot of people's heads. Yeah. But it yeah, is what no, it is. It all made sense to me. It, it really was something that I knew... But so do you understand why I told you, let's hold off on one-on-one -on -one until you see this video? Right, which I was going to actually follow up with the, do you think I should invest in the, um, No, here's the deal, especially because of this situation with, right now we need to focus on, see where you're at because... The reason why I told you to initially wait on um, uh, doing the one-on-one -on -one coaching initially was because I wanted you to wait and see that video. Because where you were telling me, hey, now mind you, this is before I knew any of what you just shared with me just now. And obviously before I've looked over any of your agreements or P&L. Um, you know, you said to me something to the effect of I want to grow this by 40% or 30%, whatever it is that you had said. Right. And that's why in that video I specifically said to you, Let's take a look because, is, and again, I was just speculating, not seeing anything or hearing anything that you just shared with me. It's before we throw down the gauntlet and say, I want to increase by 40%, let's evaluate where we want to invest our time, money, and effort. Right. You know, so that's why this thing with is also, um, I'm looking at this as a, as a perspective of NEMT and home care. So, mm -hmm. Uh, you right now, especially because you know you're already burning both ends of the candle, being busy as heck right now. Let's focus on what's in front of us right now. Right. So, with that being said, I'm looking at um, resume. Mm -hmm. I don't see anything for education wise. What's his background education wise? Do you have any idea? Um. Gosh, I can pull up his LinkedIn page. Um, not off the top of my head, I don't remember. How old is he? Um, well, he's like probably mid forties, uh, maybe early fifties. See, I think he has. When did he get laid off? Do you know? Uh, he, like two weeks ago. So he basically called me about a week after. Um, he got laid off. So he's just collecting unemployment right now? I guess so, yeah. It yeah. doesn't look like he has a degree in anything. Uh, certification of medical assistant. Um. I mean, trust me, don't get me wrong. Yeah. You know, all the uh, degrees, I mean, I take that with a grain of salt anyways, because so much of that is all crap anyways. Right. 
So I care about the real world experience, which clearly, I mean, if you read through his resume, it all looks good and sounds good. Right. Here's the thing that, two things that give me a little thorn in the side. Number one, you mentioned your concern is obviously loyalty. What give, What made you say that? Well, I mean, that's, I've been struggling with finding a, a number two for a while, realizing I didn't have anyone to help carry the load no one there was no one else that could represent the company um and and part of that for me with my hesitation was you know it's 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 this is everything i have this is you know directly affects my family my livelihood 100%. So, all the more so, reason all the more right. reason we need to be successful with this and you need to follow the strategy that I outlined in that video. So five, ten years from now, that is never going to be an issue for you. Right. So that's been one of my biggest drawbacks is, for one, finding someone who's qualified to being able to, you know, be confident that they're loyal to seeing this through. Like, they're they're just as committed to me to grow in business, not just doing a job. They're committed to growing it. Right. So a lot, a lot of things to consider here. Um, yeah. The second thing I want to know is why would they lay him off if he's such a? Because I'm reading the resume, and based right. upon what you're telling me, mm -hmm. someone who helped a grow the home care, which is fantabulous, and I'll talk about that in a minute. So the guy had, pardon my ignorance, he had more experience in the home care and then he saw the opportunity for NEMT and then he just started to figure it out because if I read his resume, it looks like he was heavy in the home care, was with them. They were predominantly a home care business. He suggested NEMT right. and they started to figure that out as they expanded. Correct. Yeah, he was with the home care for six, six years and worked with other home care organizations before that. <clears throat> and that's great. Yeah. Especially if that's something you want to get into, which I'm all for, you know, at this yeah, point in time. Definitely. If there's one thing that this COVID thing has clearly underscored to people, the need to be diversified, A. Uh, right. The good thing about the home care is that, I mean, home care has experienced nothing compared to what NEMT experienced in terms of any type of uh, drop in volume because of this COVID. Um, right. You know, Obviously, when it comes to home care, I'm partial, obviously, to the private pay work. Um, right. I would argue that my people who are heavy invested in the private pay maybe experienced up to like a maybe like a 10% drop. And But realistically, I would argue that most of that drop has been because now the daughter, the son, they're not working. They are able to spend more time with the parent, that type of deal. So it's not that right. not that the, not that the need isn't there. It's just that now they have literally have more availability. Um, right. Those um, I would argue that those home care providers who do the uh, the government assistance work, honestly, they have experienced like next to no drop. So I guess right. I guess through this experience has been the one upside to doing the government reimbursed home care. But again, I'm, I'm partial towards the private pay because the rates of reimbursement are just that much better, et cetera, et cetera. Right, right. So, um, yeah. I get it. I understand what you're thinking. Totally appreciate it. Um, he looks the part, speaks the part, all that kind of stuff. So, why would they let him go, number one? Which is, and again, it maybe it's not through no, it could 100% be through no fault of his own. But you said you were going to ask people about him. What have you found out so far? I've spoken to two people. Um, one is someone he's worked with at the home care side of things. But granted, she's a friend. So she's she had to she's a friend of his. Right. Okay. Um, the other person I talked to um, was from a facility. Didn't really say anything specifically about him other than, you know, he's he was the one negotiating the contract, came up with the the um, the contract, um, checks in on him, had nothing bad to say, says they're happy with the service, happy with the contract, so um, 
all is good there. I'm waiting to hear back from another lady who I think will really have some insight because she's the director of care coordination for all three major hospitals here. And so she's worked directly with him as well as me. So she'll have a more insight as to, you know, um, their, his reputation with them, you know, and that'll be really telling. So how do we validate his, all these con, supposed contra, uh, contacts that he has right. with all these different facilities? I mean, look, I, you know, it's, you could say you know a lot of people. I could say I know a lot of people. John Doe could say he knows a lot of people. Just because you know people doesn't mean it's translating to dollars. That's basically where I'm headed at with this. So he may be, right. people could easily argue they're well connected, but if it doesn't translate to dollars, that's of no value to me. Obviously no utility right. to you either. That's my question is how do we validate this? Here's where I'm going at with this big picture. I'm going to tell you that, um, and I'm not saying you're doing this, so understand the big picture first. Not 90%, not 95%, 100% of the time, and I've been doing this for a long time, 100% of the time, Every single time I've experienced a provider that has their goal, their vision was to quote unquote pass the buck. And I'm not saying you are, so understand. I'm I'm laying the I'm going broad and then I'll narrow this down. Right. Every single time I've seen someone try to pass the buck, pass the responsibility, uh, pass the chalice on to some um, you know, underling. To go out there and do something they should be doing, 100% of the time, it's always mm -hmm. failed. Every single time. And that's another concern of mine. I, I, I see that point. Now. And I'm just trying to consider what you know what my options are. Right. My and, situation. But see, that's the not, difference here. That's the difference here because I don't think you're trying to do exactly what I described. So. Right. 100% of the time, every single time, it doesn't matter where it's happened, who I've worked with, where they're located across the country, every time they've tried to, and I would argue they all, the, the, here's the difference, I would argue they try to take it from more of a lazy position, whereas you're looking at it more of a growth position, and I think that's totally different. Every single time I've seen someone do this, and they think they're just going to pay someone, uh, it's going to be commission-based. It always flops 100% of the time. Not 95, not 99, 100% of the time. I think what's different with you is you're already busting your ass. You're busting your butt. You're not out there being lazy. You're not trying to do this so that you can sit in Cabo. Right. Uh, you know, you're not trying to get... Bottom line is this needs to be something that is... Um, I think there's a, a distinct difference between the prospects of bringing him on, especially because realistically, if we're serious about obviously continuing to grow the NEMT, mm -hmm. and honestly, what really makes me excited about the prospects of is, again, I wouldn't, I didn't know this before looking at his resume, is really his background is actually heavier in home care than it is NEMT. Right. Which is like, that's a win-win. Right. Definitely. So, um, how, how many times have you talked to him? Um, I did a Zoom meeting with him last week. Um, I've met him personally one or two times briefly, um, and then just kind of uh, email corresponded since, since our meeting last week. So how long um, was your Zoom meeting for? Uh, maybe 45 minutes or so. What did you guys cover? We were just talking about, you know, um, what he could bring to the table. Did he approach you or you approach him? He approached me. Okay. Yeah, he said, you know, he said that he has a real passion for what he's doing. He felt drawn to um, our company. And, um, you know, so, you know, it could be all of his bluff or it could be, you know, how he really feels. So let me ask you this. How is it that someone of his age, because he's not old, if he's mid 40s, mid 50s, he's still a young dude, how was it he's not starting his own business? With his experience with all this, why isn't he going off just doing his own thing? 
with so much connections, so much ability, and if everything is what it is on this resume, why isn't he starting his own business? Because, I mean, again, I'm obviously entrepreneur DNA 100%. Right. How are you not doing this? I don't know. Maybe, I, maybe he just isn't willing to take the risks. I don't know if he just... I don't know. That's a good question. That's what I thought. Actually, initially, I thought maybe he was going to come offer to buy the business from me, um, not come on board with me. But you know, hey, uh, I don't think I'm not ready to sell for sure. No. So that um, but yeah, I don't know. It's a good question. I definitely would rather bring him on board than him starting his own business. Oh, no question. I mean, look, here's the deal. There's no question. I mean, it, if someone, if you said to me right now, Joel, it has to be a yay or nay, yeah. I, I'm leaning towards yay. No question. And Well, then I'm also acknowledging my skills and realizing my, you know, what I lack in skills. And he 100. definitely has far more experience in negotiating contracts, which I have very to li little to none. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, that's really enticing to me because he has a key skill that I know I don't have. But do you I'm see, do you see have. why, by you saying that, that right there is a key component. So do you understand why I keep asking the question, why would this company let this guy go? Right. It makes no sense. So Somewhere along the lines, I'm missing something because if this guy has been able to go out and secure these contracts, negotiate these contracts, I mean, look, let's not get it twisted. If you have John Doe driver, he could be the world's best driver. He could be the best person at interacting with, communicating, caring for, transferring that elderly person. But that doesn't mean you put him on the front line to go into a hospital unsupervised and have the confidence he's going to go in there and represent the company well from a negotiating a negotiation standpoint. So these are two totally different levels. So someone right. like him, and let's be honest, if they were paying him, your email said like, uh, you know, with a paid week off, let's say grand, am I right? Yeah. Um, you know, that doesn't set the world on fire. So right. what I'm saying is, if this guy has all the skills that he claims, number one, number two, is substantiated by his resume, which you and I both know that could all be nonsense, but we're going to take it at face value. I would say for someone who has the ability to do that is underpaid. So why would he be underpaid for so long, number one? And if there was such high value that he brought, such a high ROI that he brought to the other company... Why would they possibly let him go? That should be the absolute last person that you ever let go because if he built that business from zero to whatever it is now, took it from zero to 50, even if things have slowed down because of this coronavirus, that he's your, he's your builder, he's your negotiator, that is the person you never let go. Yeah. So they let him, so they let him go and he has all these quote unquote contacts, skills, experience, why isn't he leveraging all that to go build his own business? And now he says he's drawn to you, and obviously you're smaller in size as compared to the other company, but he's drawn to you. I'm not sure exactly what that means, but whatever. But now he's on your lap. So, right. look, part of my responsibility in working with you is to be the voice of reason who is unbiased, third, you know, unbiased third-party um, perspective. To right. kind of, you know, no, I get it, yeah. So, no, it's the same questions I had. Is, yeah, exactly. If he's, you know, this great, why would they let him go? That would be the last per. He would be the last person I ever terminate for my. I mean, it's like I'm down to my last dollar. It is what it is. Feast or fame, and I gotta feed myself. I gotta let you go. There's no way I'm letting this guy go because even if everything dwindles down to nothing, based upon what he's done. I know he could help. He's an invaluable asset to help me bring it back. So that's what I don't know, and that's why I asked you. So you talk to all these other people out there and these quote unquote contacts you have. What kind of feedback are you getting? Because there's got to be something we're missing. Right. No. Yeah, I agree. His his reasoning because he said he was pretty much blindsided and shocked by it, is that the owners have come into some personal hardships and maybe they needed to cut some. 
Yeah, I get it. Make, make mm-hmm. some room for it. Or two, they're, they're planning to sell like their plan has been, and they needed a cut, you know, a high dollar expense. Um, I don't know. It, yeah, it's definitely... That's I'm I'm thinking the same thing. I'm just trying to weigh the pros and cons. Yeah. What do is that such a big con that I can't see the pros? You know, is it? Is, well, it's gonna be a risk. What I mean, look, is it, look. There's a risk with anything. You and I both know it. You you know you could be anybody. They interview well, and then they're a complete freaking dud once you once they start working for you. Then there's other people. Then there's other people you hire. You're like, eh, I don't know, but. You pass the smell test. All right, we'll give it a shot, and they turn out to be one of your best employees ever. You know, right. so there's always a risk with everything. So we know that. But right. this this could be just a classic example of hire fast or, and fire even faster if we determine that he's a dud that he's just got to go faster. It is what it is. Now, with that being said, here would be my advice. Um, here's why I wanted to see your P and L real quick. What do you have for cash on hand in your business? And that's in the business business thing? Yeah, that's like just in my checking. But I do have um um you know when the COVID hit. But um yeah, so that's that's another big thing is how do I you know, what can I entice him with? What yeah. you, Here's what I, here's here's my stre- here's my thought process. How, let me ask you this. Let's take a step back. How did you leave your last conversation with him? Uh, good, hopeful in that you know I, I told him that I appreciated him coming to me, definitely wanting to consider this, um, and so that's pretty much how I left it. It was that I needed to talk to my advisors, check my you know with my accountant, see what I can come up with, consider. You know, all the options, that's where I left it. And when did you have this conversation with them? That was last week. And you haven't talked to him since then? Uh, just email correspondence, getting his resume, just, um, yeah, but not, no, not major talking to him since. So you sent me this resume yesterday. When did he send it to you? Yesterday. Beautiful. I'm surprised he didn't go back further, though, and include education stuff. And again, you know, I don't place a whole lot of value on that. At least we're not this type of a role. Bottom line is this. If I had to do a black and white, it's got to be yes or no right now. I would tell you, hey, let's pursue this guy for sure. Okay. Because I think the upside, um, the upside is, the reward is bigger than the risk, in my opinion. Right. So... Let me ask you this. Have you told him, the NEMT is obvious, have you told him anything about the home care? Uh, I think I mentioned that that's the, definitely a growth area I want to go into next. So, for example, let's say he's doing, um, pardon my ignorance, in the email, he's doing uh, his week off type deal. Right. Um, we're not doing it. That's not going to happen. Right. <laughs> okay. What about um, the car thing? What's the situation with the car and the gas card? So he said they gave him a company car, and he can use it for business and personal use and a gas card. Um, he said he also got one percent of all the sh- uh, of one percent increase annually on uh, shares of the company. So I'm not de- I'm not willing to give up shares. No. So that's the thing. Yeah. Are we talking profit sharing, ownership in, uh, interest? What are we looking at with? I mean, because according to what he's telling you in this email, I want to be crystal clear. If he's if he's getting ownership interest annually, then he owns part of the company. They just laid him off. That kind of doesn't sound right to me. Now, if he's getting a percentage of profit, if it's profit sharing versus ownership, that's that's different. Because right here it says company shares. Is he talking profit sharing or company shares as in ownership? Those are two different things. Right. Uh, I'll have to ask him. I mean, I don't remember 
which one specifically it was. You know, given <laughs> and look, here's the deal: giving ownership interest, and I'm not saying you are mm-hmm. giving ownership interest isn't necessarily a bad thing, um, but it needs to be highly, 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 highly limited and regulated because at the end of the day, the last thing you ever want is when this comes time to go sell your business, you don't want someone saying, well, I own a portion of this and I'm going to protest the selling of this. Therefore, that my, that that minority interest needs to be exceptionally minority so they basically have no say in the matter. Right. But that's neither here nor there. Here's here's my initial thought process in this whole thing. Again, if you said, Joel, one or the other, I would say, let's bring them on. So with that being said, what's the best strategy to do that? Well, first thing is um, the car, the uh, paid vacation. I mean, those are just, they're not even feasible at this point. Right. Not even feasible. Right. Um, how soon is he looking to work? He's ready to get started right away. He's, you know, not wanting to be unemployed any longer. So I gotta assume he's getting paid unemployment. At least he's making. I know. I know unemployment right now is, you know, pretty much enhanced. I I know some people are making more money being unemployed right now than they are working. Yeah, you I know. don't know. Yeah, but he said he wants to get started right away. So here's what I would do. I wouldn't commit to anything financially right now because what I would do is this. You know, I'm a firm believer. He who speaks first loses. So before you make him an offer, I would ask him. I would ask him what he's looking for. I know he already told you I got this, I got that. Bottom line is you need to make here. You need to follow up, have another conversation with him. Tell him you appreciate the interest. Um, You're excited about the prospects of him joining you. Uh, at an executive level because you obviously want to leverage his experience and give him kudos, give him props. We want to leverage right. your experience, your contacts, your abilities. Hey, we love it. We welcome it uh, to help us grow our NEMT. But I'm also interested in, uh, it's been on my mind for a long time. It's been in my uh, of, of interest for a long time. Uh, I've always wanted to uh, diversify in starting a home care agency, which clearly based upon your background, you could help me with both. With that being said, with that being said, for example, like the company car thing, though I would make it that a company car thing, and, and a company car thing honestly is not as expensive as people would think, but regardless, it's still an expenditure, money's tight right now. But I would make I would make something like that contingent upon your ability to help me grow ABC Home Care Agency. And the reason why is when I look at his resume and he's his resume. Um, where does it say it? Somewhere's on here. He talks about how he would um, how he was providing. He was doing a lot of in home assessments. Right. Beautiful. Yeah. If he's the first guy in starting ABC Home Care Agency, and he's get, he's in the position to go out there and do home care assessments, then honestly, then that that's where it's worth providing him a car at that right. point in time. Now, is that going to happen next month? No, it's not going to happen next month. Right. But that definitely, if he helps build this and grow it, uh, even if even if uh, when we first launch ABC Home Care Agency. Um, it doesn't even show a profit because the available funds, uh, the trade-off right. is to literally support not only part of his salary, but also to pay for his vehicle. That's a worthy investment. Okay. So my strategy right now would be, I want this guy, but let's yeah. first have a conversation with him. Let him know that we're flattered by his enthusiastic uh, interest in joining the company. Um, we see and recognize the value he could bring, um, especially, and I would stress this, especially because of the COVID, we need to be exceptionally smart and prudent financially with how we move forward. So, um, and this, so I wouldn't throw down a gauntlet. I wouldn't throw down a number. I would ask him say specifically, what is it, uh, that you're looking for? 
how much do you need in the short term uh, to bring you on board understanding that right now things are definitely slower because of COVID so we need to make sure that we keep our belt tight what do you need in the short term to at least join our team to get going I would also like I say I would entice him by mentioning specifically um, that I do have plans to create ABC home care agency and I would like you to be an active participant in that growth endeavor I th and I would that's that's where I would drop the dime of I would definitely see at that point in time as that as we launch ABC home care agency uh, especially because of your past experiences and in, in performing home care in home care assessments um, I could see the need and it would be warranted for us to provide you with a vehicle at that time notice some of the notice some of the key words I'm dropping here right like at that time right so I first want him to speak. What is it you want? Well, if it doesn't right now, I could come at you with this. Now I wouldn't make, I wouldn't even answer him right there. Say, but it doesn't right now, I need a little bit more time to further flush these numbers out uh, with my accountant again, because things have been in flux because of this COVID nonsense, businesses, uh, you know, uh, constricting. So we need to be very smart financially. So. Mm -hmm. I would I would try to flush out, get a um, gain his interest specifically by asking him what you know kind of try to zero in on the numbers that he wants, but then don't commit to anything. I would definitely drop the hint, uh, and maybe he'll be excited by that. That if he's looking at like okay man, if she's really gonna if she if she's serious about expanding into ABC Home Care Agency, that's that's my bread and butter background from how many. You read his resume here, I mean, we're talking many, many years that he did that before he even got involved with NEMT. Right. Um, so I, that's where I would drop the dime of, um, drop the subtle hints of his ability to, um, I mean, because look, realistically, if he, if he is worth his weight in gold as what his resume says and everything you've presented in your email so far, then if he's able to replicate the same level of success with a startup in your ABC home care agency, in addition to helping you with your existing NEMT business, then realistically he has the ability to make even more money with you than he does with this company here. Right. And you know I'm a firm believer in never deny someone the opportunity to make money. If this right. guy's the hustler that he claims to be, and I mean hustler, I mean that as a compliment, as in a hard worker, right. uh, and he's as sharp, as this all appears, then I'm confident he can make more money with you than he was with them. Gotcha. But that being said, we're not going to open up the coffers right now and just throw money at the guy. It's not even feasible, even if we wanted to. Right. So we got to be practical and pragmatic. So we're looking at, uh, let's say it's May right now. Um, you know, you bring him on. If you brought him on, this is this is why you cannot commit to a number because you got to look at it realistically. Like, okay, what would be this guy's weekly salary? Do you pay your people once a week or once every other week? What? Uh, bi-weekly. Okay. So, I mean, you're looking at realistically that's going to be a nice little chunk of change that you'd have to pay him, and realistically, his salary would be almost twice that of the office personnel that you just got rid of. Right. But the good news is this, by you getting rid of that office personnel, it definitely gives you much more breathing room, which is great. Yeah. Which is great. So, but, go ahead. But even, at, even if, but there, yeah, but there's still no way I could give him. And, and that's why I say, I, I wouldn't, you can't. That's why I say, it's like, okay, let's say, um, Let's say if we were able to get him in the short term, mm -hmm. uh, literally in the short term, if we were able to get him, if we were able to meet in the middle, and I'm just making these, again, I haven't looked at your PNL, I haven't seen any of that yet. Right. So take that for what it's worth. But let's say we were able to meet in the middle and we were able to say, okay, you, we could, and again, I'm just making that up right now just to kind of give you visually the, the, my thought process of how we could do something like this. And then thereafter, thereafter, everything else has got to be incentive-based. Now, how do we structure that incentive-based? 
we, right. well, we'll cross that bridge in the very near future after I learn a little bit more and you learn a little bit more about his thought process. I mean, there's no reason for us right now to map out this entire scenario if all of a sudden you meet with the guy and he's not interested because a car and a gas. That's not even an option. So if he hits right. us with that and he throws down the gauntlet, then screw you, he's out. It is what it is. Gotcha. Okay. Some of the best deals are the deals that don't happen, and if he throws down a gauntlet like that, then this was the deal that wasn't supposed to happen, and God bless everybody. Right. Right. Yeah, it just wasn't meant to be. Exactly. So. But if, but if here, you're going to feel drawn to us, I'm hoping that that'll... That's why I say, if, 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 if all that was was a feel-good, fluffy, you know, I'm going to kind of, you know, give her a snow job to gain her interest and see where it takes me, then, you know, right. either way we could flush all that out, but... So let's say he let's say he's interested in that, because right. realistically, let's say he does come down in salary a little bit, because he's smart and realizes, okay, you know what, your overall revenue is down, as is everybody's, because this COVID number one, number two, if you are able to meet in the middle somehow, realistically, it's probably still more than he's making right now on unemployment, anyways. Mm -hmm. At that point in time, if we have that agreement, then we need to say to ourselves, okay what are the actual um, incentives and what are the metrics for literally measuring or quantifying his level of productivity and then the compensation? That's a whole other comp uh, conversation that we're going to need to to have because it's one thing to bring him on, but then we need to literally say, if you come on, here's what's expected of you. Here's what we need you to do in our NEMT. Here's where we're at right now. We're on the back end of this COVID nonsense. It's going to start opening up rather quickly. There is going to be a ballooning effect. A lot of these hospitals, facilities, they're going to start to balloon because they're broke. And they, right. they, need, to get, they need to start doing all these elective surgeries and, and physicals and all that kind of stuff. So they're, they need that. they're going to open up those coffers pretty quick to get people in there. So yeah. you know there's going to be a ballooning effect. Right. But it's not like we bring you on and all of a sudden you're getting profit sharing because of something that's a, just a natural byproduct of the circumstances of the environment. Right. So we have got to have specific metrics of you're going to be responsible for this. Here's how we measure success. And in measuring success, here's the value of it. Here's your share of it. Right. Is it possible to lower the, the salary, present a lower salary? But higher incentives. 100%. 100%. I mean, again, I, I don't don't hold my, you know, don't hold me to the I'm just saying right. to give you an idea right. of, I'm just saying this right. is how we could structure this whole thing. Right. I mean, because look, really, it, here, we could even do it like this, as in like, he, let's say you can't even do something like that. But if this guy is worth his weight in salt, this time next year, will be long since past this COVID nonsense. Business will have returned. Plus, if he's coming, he's joined the team, team, and he's able to do what he claims he's done here for this other company, where you'll be next year will be completely different. Guess what? Let's revisit the situation, and let's give you even more. Right. Again, it's like it, just because we agree to something now doesn't mean like we're going to live and die by this for the next 10 years. So, again, right. when I say meet in the middle, maybe it's not literally the middle. You know, I mean, maybe it's literally got to be something closer to what you were paying your office girl. And I'm, again, if that's something he goes for, I love it. Yeah. And from thereafter, we say to ourselves, okay, and we literally tell him, look, here's the deal. I could absolutely guarantee you this. From thereafter, we could do performance-based, but we need to define that. Mm -hmm. We got to define what's, what, like, what is he performing? What are the expectations? How do we quantify it? It's got to be measurable. Right. And, again, this is where you could literally tell him. And again, we're in May. Um, you know, we had plans at the middle of this year to launch ABC Home Care. Uh, those plans may have been pushed back more towards the end of the year because of the drag, the drag on circumstances because of COVID. Okay. Um, but with that being said, I need you to, in the immediate future, help us continue to help our NEMT business rebound and further grow to be even more competitive than we already are in our current uh, um, community, expand outside our community, but even more so we want to get back on track because I am committed to growing ABC Home Care Agency and based upon your past experiences, that's something I want you to be involved in. So realistically, 
Where we're going to be six months from now is going to be completely different. Where we're going to be 12 months from now and 18 months from now is going to be completely different from six months from now. Right. So with that being said, um, this is a unique situation. This COVID nonsense is a unique situation. It's basically changed the entire landscape and dynamics of everyone's business. So if you're willing to be flexible um, and have a greater vision, and I would literally tell him, my, look, here's, my goal would be this. My goal would be for you to make more money with me than you ever did with them. Because I know that if you can make more money with me, you're going to be that much happier. With that being said, right now, we got a great anchor on our business, and it's called COVID-19. And that's hurt a lot of businesses. It's hurt everything. So if you, if you expect me to be able to duplicate what you were making previously from where you just got laid off, I definitely can't do that again. If we had this discussion months ago before COVID, uh, we probably could have been more competitive. But guess what? COVID has changed everything. So right. I need you to have a greater vision. Uh, and again, this is why I don't necessarily want you to lock yourself into any numbers for sure. But drop all the proper subtle hints so we can... The goal would be to capture a greater sense of A, what he's looking at. What does he want? Uh -huh. That's critical. What does he want? Bottom line. Number two... In addition to what he wants, what is he willing to concede? That's big. Okay. What is he willing to concede? If he's adamant, nope, I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to sit here and collect unemployment until you can guarantee a car and a gas card with the insurance for the car. That's not going to happen. So this is done. So if you're able to concede and backtrack and number three, have a vision a vision of, okay, this chick's going to grow, this business is going to grow, she's highly motivated into growing uh, a whole different business, i.e. ABC Home Care. If he might be looking at this as, okay, this is my wheelhouse, this is my background, I know I can blow this up. She's going to help fund the show. She's going to give me the green light to do what I do best. Sky's the limit. He's either going to... He's either going to take that posture and see it, or he's not. He's going to be a hard liner. If he's going to be a hard liner on everything, then we have no deal. And I would I would call BS on some of the things he has here in his uh, resume. Gotcha. You agree? Gotcha. Yeah. No. Totally. Yeah. I mean, yeah. There's no way I could pay you know that much. Of you course know, not. And it wouldn't be worth struggling. For no. taking a financial risk if, you know, mm -hmm. he's not willing to, to work with me on that. Exactly. So, definitely. Yeah. But, no, it's a, it's a, it's exciting, though, to have uh, the potential of someone who has the experience and exciting it is to see the potential of where we could go. And, see, that's why, realistically, that opens up the conversation of this. Mm -hmm. I've told you before. Not 90, not 95, 100% of the time, every single time, I've seen someone try to pawn off their ownership responsibilities to someone else to go through, manage their roles and responsibilities as owner, every single time it's flopped. Mm -hmm. This is a different situation that I think that you're in because you're not looking to replace yourself, you're looking to enhance right. yourself. Right. You're still willing to work. You're not going to be right. lazy sitting back in Cabo, you know, sipping drinks. Number one. Number two, it leads me to the prospects, and I would not drop this hint to him yet. Okay. This would be an opportunity where, honestly, honestly, uh, I would be willing to at least uh, consider the prospects of giving up some ownership interests. And when I say that, I'm talking literally just like small percentages. Because, gotcha. and then when I say that, I'm talking more towards home care than I am than I am the NEMT. Because if you go with home care, if you go home care, I would uh, be willing to concede a certain percentage of him literally owning part of a home care agency, a business that's going to start from scratch. It is right. predominantly his background. And if he literally has ownership, and I do mean a small percentage, again, we would bounce around every. Uh, this conversation would bounce in many different directions before we finalize anything. Okay. But if he knows 
that if this conversation, this dialogue that you have with him continues in a positive direction and he begins to realize, oh, snap, this girl might actually give me some part ownership in a whole new venture that may really make him uh, open up to the possibilities and have a much grander vision. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So it's not like I would look to... I would look at it like this. If you prove yourself in my NEMT business and you grow it like you claim you did with this other company since, what, uh, 2014, 15, whatever it was. Right. You prove yourself with that. You know I'm going to grow my uh, home care agency. Do the same thing. I'm going to give you ownership interest from the start in this home care agency, and that's where it's going to help fund your vehicle, et cetera, et cetera. Understand, you will always, you will always be the baller shot caller and hold the vast majority of ownership interest for sure because the last thing we're ever going to do is put ourselves in a position where someone could protest the future sale of a business. Right. Definitely. But I think that could really be that he believes there's the opportunity, and I'm all for it. I'm being absolutely serious and sincere. Yeah. Of giving yep. up. I mean, let's just say, let's just say he had 10% ownership interest. Ten percent ownership interest is a. It's better than one. It's definitely better than none. But right. to literally be able to have ownership interest, uh, you're already drawing a salary. Just because you have ownership interest in ABC Home Care doesn't mean that you do not have uh, responsibility to your existing NEMT business. You still got to work that. Right. So I mean, this is where all the agreements. Again, this is just you and I having our initial dialogue. This has to go in many other different directions and much deeper before we finalize any of this. But the, my point is to put all the possibilities on the table so you can start start to see, you know, we don't necessarily need to have. We don't need to have that right now. If we could at right. least, if he's the real deal like he claims and we're able to entice him by your vision because you already have plans to do ABC Home Care, um, I think you. I think, especially after watching that last video I put out, I think you have a much bigger vision for where you want to be, and this right. guy could help. Yeah. Help you accomplish definitely. that vision for sure. If he's able yeah. to help you grow the NEMT, and at the same time help grow ABC Home Care uh, Agency, it's a win-win for everybody. Right. No. Yeah. Well, good. Kind of the clarity I was hoping for. So. The takeaway from today is have another uh, conversation with him. Right. Flush him out. Try to determine what he wants. Mm -hmm. um, what he's willing to concede because we're not going to give him everything he wants. Right. So part of that concession needs to be, does he have a bigger vision? And I would literally, at some point in time in that conversation, I would literally tell him, look, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, especially with the COVID issue and everyone's business in recession and retracting. Um, there's just no way that I could match what they were paying you. But my goal is this. In partnering with me, and I wouldn't be afraid to drop that word right now. Yeah. In partnering with me, my goal is this. For you to make more money than you made with them. If you make more money with me than you did with them, then I know that it's a win-win. We're all making more money. And right. what and I would and this is where I would start to open up the conversation, and legitimately tell him that uh, part of my uh, enthusiasm in considering you coming on board is literally your background in home care because for a long time, uh, I've had the interest and the desire to diversify into home care and based upon your experience, I really think that it could be something you could help me with. I obviously need to work to get our NEMT business to rebound and grow after we get through this COVID nonsense. But I also believe that in addition to you helping with NEMT, you can also help me start and grow ABC Home Care, which honestly, if you're success, if you're successful in helping with NEMT, and I see that it's there, I would definitely be willing to bring you on uh, as a limited partner. Stress those two words, limited partner. Right. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Limited partner. Yeah, no, I'm willing to consider that, especially for this new venture of home care. Yes. Um, so, um, and as a limited partner, 
Um, you know, if if, if where he if he's already talked to you about that's when you say uh, later on in the conversation when you mention bringing you on as a limited partner in ABC Home Care, this is where uh, hopefully we'd be in a position where you'd be able to have a company vehicle. Because honestly, it's, I mean, we're being honest, we're being sincere. If his responsibility is literally going to be going out and doing home care uh, assessments, I mean, it, there's nothing wrong with giving him a company vehicle for that because it's legit. Right. Well, at that point, too, I would, you know, have the funds to do that. 100%. Right now, our company vehicles are doing trips sure 100 percent. the good thing about uh, the good thing about the uh um the home care okay if he it, the good thing about him some having a vehicle someday um is you're not going to pay anywhere near this the amount that you're paying for one of your nmt vehicles you know the insurance just doesn't even compare it's a joke right right you know so what do you think, sister? Are you and I uh, sharing the same vision here? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, and now you understand why we couldn't type all this. We had to have this conversation. No, no, yeah, I, I definitely appreciate the call versus typing because you know there always questions lead to more questions. Sure, sure. And everything. So, um, no, everything that you were saying, you know, I totally agree with, and. I, you know, I think give me, me the perspective of I don't have to lay it out on the table right now. We need to have another conversation. Conversation. And, that we may have to have more conversations, plural, but the next one will be important. Because then I think the next one will determine do we even proceed forward. Okay. Right. If I can make it clear, look, company vehicle anytime soon, if that, you know, sinks your ship, then we're done. But right. if you're still in this game and you're willing to hunt, uh, I'm gonna. Right. I'm willing to put opportunities in front of you. Right. Yeah. No, I agree. Yeah, I appreciate all of your feedback. And it's definitely put me in a, a headspace to to think through all of this and have a good starting point. So I mean, I, talk to them on I want. Look, here's the deal. I'm gonna be honest with you. I want it to work out because if you yeah. have, if this guy is everything that he claims in the resume, what you've heard. And the connections that he's had based upon the previous business. If all of that holds true, right. not only could he be a valuable asset, I mean, you literally have me suggesting to you, this would be one of the few examples where I would say, this is someone you want to give ownership interest to. Right. No, I, yeah, I agree. Because this yeah, could be, thinking. if that all works out, this would be the scenario where he helps to put you over the hump in a better trajectory so you could take advantage of things like I, I talked about in that last video. Right. Definitely. And Agreed. That, and that's what we got to do, sissy. Sounds good. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for your call and helping me through all this. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to send me the things I need. Yeah, I'll work on that tonight and get those to you uh, by tomorrow at the latest. Sounds good. Awesome. All right, sissy. Take care of those little kitties. I will take care of your family and uh, try not to work too hard. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Good talking All right, with you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.